Deborah. I'm the director of the World Can't Wait. And Deborah, what's going to be happening here today? We're in front of the White House. This is what's the, going to be a rally a demonstration? Yeah, this is the International Day of Remembrance for the Victims of Torture. And specifically, uh, we've passed the 140th day of the Guantanamo prisoners courageous hunger strike which we began in February of 2013 and we are out here today on this victims of torture day to demand that Guantanamo be closed immediately right now that indefinite detention be ended as a practice of the United States government and that the 86 men who have been cleared for release from Guantanamo for many years, up to six and seven years, be allowed right away to go home. These are just basic demands that people all over the world are making of the Obama administration right now. So that's why we're in front of the White House and we're going to have 86 people dressed in orange jumpsuits to dramatize the fact that all of these men are on hunger strike, 140 some. There are four men that are in the hospital and 45 being force-fed. It's, it's a really terrible, dramatic situation where there's been no way out of Guantanamo for the last several years other than in a coffin. We demand an end to that. And the president, I remember when he was running for office at College Park, Maryland, just down the road here, yeah. promised the audience, he would close Guantanamo if he were elected president. And he did it on another, uh, other occasions, too. Yeah, you know, he made that promise after he, three days after he was sworn in in 2009, and then on March 23rd of this year, he again said, I would like to close Guantanamo. But nothing has happened in that direction, and the men are still on hunger strike, still have no promise of any way to get out. All legal options have been closed by the U.S. courts, the federal courts, and all political options except the demand of the people have been closed off, and that's precisely why we're here. Anything else, Deborah? Well, this is not only about 166 men left in Guantanamo, is it? It's about a whole dangerous direction that this country has taken, particularly since the Obama administration has not just continued the policies of the Bush regime, but has expanded them in two very key ways that, that form sort of the basis of the Obama doctrine, if you will. The one is indefinite detention that has now been written into the National Defense Authorization Act. The executive branch, the president, can um, decide that anyone can be held indefinitely. That is without charges, without any way to get out, to know what you're charged with, to get leave legal representation. This has been practiced by the U.S. all over the world. This is Bagram, this is Guantanamo. And the second part of this is the um, targeted killing. Some people say targeted assassination. Obama says legal under international law. Most of the rest of the world says completely against international law to kill people on the signature of a president who meets right here in the White House every other Tuesday we're told to make up a list of uh, people who have expanded, not just people they actively know or think are involved with Al-Qaeda, but any associated forces. What does that mean, protesters in the United States? This is very, very alarming, and it's something that people um, have not been led to think about and look at, and that's another reason that we're out here. And another thing, the recent disclosures with the NSA spying, these meta databases and who are these people that are doing the spying are they you know who are these contractors well this is a, a system-wide decision yeah. to suck up all the electronic <coughs> communications of billions of people on earth for use later I mean they may be using it immediately on some people um, and the president says to tell us don't worry because it's not being immediately looked at, but it's there in a storage facility out in Utah. Every two years, the amount of information they're collecting doubles. And why? Is it just an industrial question of, of paying people off? Absolutely not. I argue, and I think there's a lot of basis for this, that the first two things I mentioned, the crimes of this government, crimes against humanity, 
unjust, illegitimate, immoral wars provoke potential response from people living in this country, and they're trying to keep us under control. That's what this surveillance is about. It is vast surveillance against whole populations of people, including political activists, including people in other countries, including educational institutions. This is what, it, what we've learned since Edward Snowden leaked this information and is very valuable for us to know, um, and not only to know about, but to act to stop. And I would send people to worldcantwait.net. We've been covering this very deeply and make the second call for people to not only defend Edward Snowden, but Bradley Manning, because Bradley Manning is a leaker who went right to the primary causes of what we should be worrying about. That, that's the illegitimate wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, when he revealed um, back in 2010 the scope of the directives of war and, and how his fellow soldiers, and this is what got him so upset in the beginning, were so callous to the deaths of Iraqi civilians, people that were not combatants. And he exposed this. It, it connected with people all over the world. He's on trial right up the road at Fort Meade, and the trial is open to the public. People should come and participate, listen, learn, and express support for the whistleblowing activities, because without them, we would not know fully what this government is doing. Sounds all kind of alarming, really, Deborah. I mean, the last couple of years, it seems like it's gotten fast-forwarded on all these different fronts. Yeah. And the American people are sort of waking up, well, catching up, but it's... You know, it's, it's late in the process to be waking up, but it's not too late. And it's very good that Edward Snowden, for instance, is getting support from around the world, not only from governments, but from people all over the globe who are saying, this guy is a hero. What the, and, and drawing attention to his main point, that what the government of the United States doing is completely illegitimate with unwarranted spying. It's as if the First Amendment and the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution don't even exist anymore, and the government can do whatever it wants and call it due process. No, the process needed is the wake up, it is the action, and it is the demand that this be stopped. These crimes of our government has to be stopped. So come to worldcantwait.net. Talk to us. Okay. Thanks so much, Deborah. Yeah. Your name, sir? My name is Maliki Kilbride, and I work with Witness Against Torture and the National Campaign for Nonviolent Resistance. And what's important about today's rally in front of the White House? Well, June is Torture Awareness Month. And today is the United Nations Day in which we remember victims of torture. And what's been going on the last many years uh, with regard to Guantanamo is uh, men and some of them boys when they started out have been held in Guantanamo since uh, Ju January of 2002. Uh, right now, uh, many of them have been on a hunger strike that goes back to uh, the winter of this year, February, March. And uh, it's very serious human rights uh, and legal situation that we're facing. Uh, the administration is moving very, very slowly, if at all, to uh, bring about real justice. And what, what's the point of the demonstration? What is it you want the president to do? We want the president and the U.S. Congress to begin to stay, take meaningful steps to uh, shut down Guantanamo, to release the prisoners that have been cleared for release. There's about 86 of them that have been cleared. They've been told at one point or another that they could go home or to another country where they would be able to live their, out their lives in uh, safety. And uh, we want them released. Uh, and then we want uh, fair trials in real courts, not military commissions, uh, for the rest of the uh, accused in Guantanamo. Anything else, Maliki? Um, 
I think it's going to be a bittersweet day. There are a lot of people who care about these issues who will be here, and I've worked with them over the years, and it will be good to see them. They're coming from all over the country to be here today. But it is uh, very bitter that uh, international law is not being respected by the United States government. The Obama administration and the U.S. Congress is in violation of international law and violating human rights in a very grotesque way uh, with the prisoners in Guantanamo. Okay, thank you so much. I'm with Ray McGovern outside the White House. And Ray, what's, what's so important about today's demonstration? It's unconscionable that the president who sits behind me here, usually, has the power to free 86 people who individually have been cleared by the CIA, the NSA, the DIA, Homeland Security, the FBI, you name it, have been cleared individually since January 2010. Now, what's my man? One, two, three. That's more than three years. He has the power to do that, and he doesn't do it. Now, he, he, he makes believe that Congress won't let him do it, but even Carl Levin, Democrat, one of the most powerful people on the Senate Armed Services Committee, has said in a letter to remind Obama, don't you remember, Mr. President, that we took great pains to include a waiver in that legislation? Don't you remember how much capital I expended? so that you could have a national security waiver and you could release those 85 people right away? Uh, you're free to do that this afternoon, Mr. President. The date of that memorandum was May 6, 2013. Nobody knows about it. Nobody knows about it. It's right out there in the open. So, Mr. President, we know about it. We know about it. We find it unconscionable. You know, Martin Luther King Jr.'s uh, letter from the Birmingham City Jail talks about his daughter coming up to him and saying, Daddy, why are white people so mean to black people? Well, just consider one of your children, Mr. Obama, coming up to you and saying, Daddy, why are black people so mean to Muslim people? Or to people who don't look like us and wear strange things on their head? Why are black people and white people so mean? Think of that, Obama. Think about that. Because 86 people deserve to be freed this afternoon. And why you're sitting on them, well, I think I know why. Number one, you have no spine. Number two, you have no conscience. And number three, you think your political future depends on Republicans who might criticize you for freeing 86 people that the CIA and everybody else said should be free. Nothing against them, and they said that three and a half years ago. Mr. President, come to your senses. Come to your senses. Do the right thing. Thanks so much, Ray. Your name, sir? My name is Stephen Fick. And Stephen, I know you got a, your problem speaking today, so maybe uh, I'm getting as close as I can to you. What's important about this rally for you? Um, well, I think it's clear to um, many of the people of the world, including many Americans, that the situation in Guantanamo prison um, that's been going on for the last more than the last decade and continuing today is a moral crisis, uh, is a moral outrage, and so actions like this of um, symbolic protest and civil disobedience are extremely important to demonstrate that there is, uh, that the American citizens are against what's happening there and against the uh, federal government's policies. Anything else, Steve? Um, I, I think the Obama administration, uh, we, the American people, and people around the world must force it to change its policies to free the people, uh, the prisoners there. They are not a security threat to us. Thank Thanks so much. Thank you. those families. I am representing here the family of Abdul Rahman Muhammad. His family drove seven hours to meet us in Sana'a. When he went to Pakistan, he went to teach the Koran. He was detained while his wife was pregnant. His daughter is now 12 years old. She has never seen her father. Her mother named her Auda, which means come home. Auda got up and tried to speak in front of our delegation and immediately started crying and couldn't talk. Her uncle said, 
Sometimes tears are the best message. We also met with the family of Abdul Haim. They drove 12 hours to tell us their story. He was only 17 years old when he went to Pakistan and was picked up and sent to Guantanamo. His family didn't have the heart to tell his mother where he was. They said he, they told her she was in the university. For years, she kept asking, where is he? Why doesn't he call? Why can't I speak to him? They said he's very busy in the university. Finally, she demanded that they tell her the truth, and they told her what happened. She was so grief-stricken that a month later, she was dead. They said she passed away, her heart aching for her son. Another family we met with was the family of Salman Yehia. Their family only found out he was in Guantanamo because they saw it on television. For an entire year, they had no idea where their son was. It was the sister who was talking to us. She said that her family has been so affected, every sister in the family, their husbands have divorced them and taken their children. They are too scared to be associated with a family who has someone in Guantanamo. She said, we are all outcasts. We met the family of Hamad Amitani. He was 23 when he was taken away. His brother said he was chubby and had bright skin. Now he's skinny and has a weird color. He looks ashen. His eyes are sunken. Before he was detained, he was engaged. His fiance waited 10 years. 10 years she waited for him until she finally gave up, got married to someone else. And the last one I wanted to mention is the family of Hayal Aziz. And it was his brother-in-law and the mother who talked to us. The brother-in-law said, every two months we get a chance to have a video conference thanks to the Red Cross. This last time we saw him and he looked so strange. His nose was swollen. And at first we didn't understand why until we remembered that's where they force the tube down his nose for the force feeding. They said, after five months on a hunger strike, he is living in a dead body. His lawyer said that they, they, he lost consciousness and was taken to the hospital. His mother said, the only way I'm going to see my son is when he's dead. She said, Al-Qaeda is exporting terrorism. What is the U.S. exporting? If Americans were held in Yemen under these conditions, what would Americans do? We hear there are animal rights in the United States. What about the rights of our sons? Your government is not a gang. It's not a mafia. It's a government. It is supposed to follow the rule of law. You can never return the 12 years you've taken from our sons, but please have mercy on them and have mercy on us. Go back and tell your president, please return them to us. Thank you. Thank you, Medea and Anne, and for bringing those. If there's not a place for them to go abroad, there are people here in the United States who are willing to take them in. There is no excuse for President Obama to not release the prisoners in Guantanamo. If you're not aware, there was an article in The Guardian this weekend from Shakur Auer, who's one of the prisoners on hunger strike, stating that not only are they being tortured because they're not eating because they haven't been freed, but now they're being placed in extremely cold rooms. When you are on hunger strike, you don't have the ability to tolerate extreme cold. This is torture upon torture. And in addition to that, they're force feeding about 40 hunger strikers with tubes that have metal points on the end. Twice a day, these prisoners have tubes with metal points placed into their delicate noses and drammed down their throats and into their stomachs to feed them. One prisoner had the tube go into his lungs and is now in the hospital because of this. Why are they doing this? They're trying to break the will of the prisoners. But you cannot break the will of those prisoners. They have nothing left to lose. But this is being done in our names. And we cannot tolerate that. So let's remember why we're here today. 
is a very serious reason. And we're here to tell the president to free the prisoners. Tell President Obama, free the prisoners. 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 Let's watch as members of our community go act in solidarity with the prisoners in Guantanamo Bay. These members are here today in this very hot weather wearing their very hot suits, but the prisoners have to go through torturous treatment every single day. Let's tell President Obama to free the prisoners. Free the prisoners.